Hi, Terry here from Stamping Magic. Welcome back to my channel. Today's project is this very cute card. I've used the Way to Goat stamp set together with a couple of my homemade stencils and I've created a stack of goats using a masking technique. So let's get started. These are all the measurements you need for all the elements required to create this project. So if you're interested in reproducing it, take a screenshot so you can refer to it later. This is the Way to Goat stamp set and I'm using the three main images today, a sentiment and also the little shadow stamp next to it. I'll be stamping using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink because I'm going to colour using the Stamping Blends alcohol markers. And I'm going to start by inking up my smallest goat image. He's going to be on the bottom of the pile. Now I'm going to stamp him just up from the bottom edge. If you're in the US or Canada, you might want to stamp him a little bit lower down because your card size is shorter than ours. I use A4. I keep any masks I've already created in with my stamp set. I stick them onto the inside cover. Now this protects them so I can reuse them time and time again. So I'll take the mask for this first little goat and place it over the top of my stamped image. This will protect my image and anything stamped over the top of the mask will look like it's behind this image. These are the masking sheets I prefer to use over any others. They're by a company called Hunky Dory and I purchased them on Amazon in the UK. Now I love these because the mask itself is very thin, it's like tissue paper, but it's backed onto acetate which gives it stability for when you're cutting the images out. Now all you have to do is stamp the image on the tissue side and then cut it out. And when you cut it out, you cut it out either on the black line or just inside the black line, the outside line. When you place your mask, you should be able to see that outside line all around the mask. So when you stamp your next image, you shouldn't get a gap between them. Now that I've protected the first image, I'm going to stamp the second goat. And I want the feet on this one to disappear behind the first goat's head. So I'm stamping it down over the top of the first goat's head. Now I can take my second goat mask and place it over my image. There's also a tiny little flower as well that I'm covering to protect it. I'm now ready to stamp the third goat and I want him on the second goat's back but I want the second goat's head in front of this goat which is why I've masked it off. And then I can cover this third goat with the last mask. Now the reason I'm covering him is because I'm going to create a background for this panel. If I wasn't going to, then I wouldn't need to apply this mask. I could, in fact, remove all the masks at this point. I'll be using Balmy Blue ink to create my sky and Pear Pizzazz ink for the grass. I'll be using two of my homemade stencils to create the background. I've got one for the grass and another one for the clouds that I'm going to create for the sky. Now, if you're interested in creating your own, I'll leave links at the top of the screen under the eye to other videos that show you how to do this. To apply the ink over my stencils, I'm using blending brushes. And these are makeup brushes that I've purchased again from Amazon. You can get specific ones for crafting, but they are a lot more expensive and these work perfectly. 
So starting with my grass, I'm going to pick up my ink and then gently apply it to the edge of the stencil and this will create my grass. Then I'll move my stencil up and across slightly so the images aren't all the same and apply the ink again. And then I'll just repeat this until I've gone up as far as I need to. Then I can do a similar process to create my sky. So I've placed my cloud stencil, I can pick up my ink and apply it and then I'm going to rotate the cloud stencil each time. This one is square in shape so I've got a different cloud shape on each of the edges. When you finish applying the ink with these blending brushes you don't need to wash them to remove the colour. You can either have one brush for each colour that you have or what I tend to do is just clean them off by working them on a microfiber cloth and then they'll be ready to use for another colour another time. I'm now going to stamp the little shadow image at the bottom of my panel and I'm using Pear Pizzazz ink again for this. I'm going to stamp my sentiment onto a scrap of normal weight Whisper White card and I'm using Bermuda Bay ink for this. And I'm going to die cut the sentiment using one of the Tasteful Labels dies. I can now very carefully remove all the masks and replace them inside my stamp case. That way they'll be protected, ready for next time. And in doing this, I can usually reuse them four or five times before I have to replace them. The legs on my second goat are really skinny and very close together. So I didn't separate them when I created my masks. So in between the front and the back legs, there is white space that I need to cover. I'm going to use one of my clear blender pens to do this. And I'm going to pick up some of the Pear Pizzazz ink and just apply it between the front and the back legs. I'll be using the Stamping Blends alcohol markers to do the colouring and I'm starting by using the dark Bermuda Bay on the little flower. I'll be using the light and dark petal pink for all the goats faces and then for the bodies I'm using greys. For the top and bottom goat I'm going to use Smoky Slate and for the middle goat I'm going to use grey granite. Now that's what I did also for my original card and if you look closely you can see that the greys are different and this just makes the individual goats stand out a bit more. I've got cool greys for the bottom and the top one and a warm grey for the middle goat.
My card base is in Bermuda Bay and this is half a standard sheet of card scored in the middle and folded to create a portrait card. Then I have my stamped and coloured panel and I'm going to layer this onto a mat of smoky slate. And then for inside the card I have a whisper white panel and I've stamped and coloured this exactly as I did the small goat on the front. And then I've got my sentiment. To help the little flower stand out just a bit more, I'm going to add a little white jelly roll pen to the centre and I'm using a size 10 pen for this. And that's it, that's my card complete. I love this stamp set, I think the images are just adorable. And here's another look at my original card. The colour I used for this one was real red. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Bye for now.